Boy, can I help you? Listen up. I'm bringing you the best content to ever exist in the door-to-door industry from sales, leadership, recruiting, and personal development. Well, why would I need that? Because never before have we been able to collaborate with the top experts in their industries, sharing their secrets and techniques on what makes them the best. Wait, who, who are you? I'm your host, Sam Taggart, creator of the DDD Experts and DDD Con. Is there a place we can sit down? Well, come on in. Vanilla is the fastest way to increase your Google and Facebook reviews through text. With a 98% open rate, Vanilla Reviews is the simplest, cheapest way to interact and engage with customers. Visit us at vanillagood.com for more information. Hey everybody, my name is Sam Taggart. I'm here with Shane Hall, and this is the DDD Podcast. And we're about to dive into how to really shift with the movement of the modern millennial generation Z, new needs and wants of this industry, like the, the generations that are now coming and not sticking with the conventional way of doing business, which I think is a really fun way. So a little bit on Shane real quick. He was an all-American wrestler and then decided to start wrestling doors, right? It's, which is harder. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, hard. it's, it's a, a different mental game versus the physical game. Well, a little bit of both. And uh, is now the regional manager at AMP smart home is it yep. amp security or AMP smart smart, AMP AMP smart. smart. Yep. and uh manages multiple teams from idaho right idaho north carolina tampa coast to coast coast to coast yep. so he's built of teams sold massive amount of accounts um multiple years over 200 and his whole expertise what makes him really different why have him on the show is simply because he does it while hunting and traveling. You've been to how many countries this? Oh, over 50. I mean, after that, yeah, over 50. Over 50 countries doing this job and really has taken on a whole new level to work hard, play hard, be me, live my life. And, and, and that's what I'm excited about. Well, but into. it's what we were initially talking about. Like, yes. we, got, we dove deep into it before we even went on this because you were saying you got into this not to be a door to door salesman. Exactly. No one goes, hey, man, can I just be. A door door salesman when you're five years old, firefighter. <laughs> yes, this door door salesman. So you you were the guy that wanted to be the firefighter, right? Yeah, I loved it. You know, I actually was a, a wildland firefighter for four years, and I did it while putting myself through college. And how I ran into this industry was merely because a buddy of mine, uh, Jason Newby, he's at Vivint. Uh, we did sports together, wrestled together back in the day, and he's like, "Hey, man, this is an opportunity," and I was like, "No." Nah. I'm not going to knock on doors, you know, but the funny thing is... And that's is, beneath me. I'm a fire, you know. Yeah, like, no, yeah, seriously, the social ramifications of yeah. if you have success in sports, I was a firefighter, I have a college degree, the social ramifications almost overpowered the reality that I'm 22, I'm in at $25,000 sleeping on my buddy's couch and I have no money, you know, and that's the social pressures where people think of door to door. So true. And it's almost like I wouldn't... I'd, I don't want to swallow the pride to go knock, but I will. I will openly be like, "Yeah, I'm in debt, like every other college kid on yeah, the planet." And I'll sleep like, on the couch. That. I'll sleep on the couch. That's versus, way better than being a direct salesman. Exactly. No, it's serious, crazy. right? So, so let's kind of fast forward. So you kind of overcame it. He finally convinces you to do it, and then kind of tell us a little bit in a nutshell the journey from there. Well, I, I've been seeing a lot of your podcasts, and, and check out his podcasts. I mean, they're sick. They're great. I mean, you're talking about guys that are making great money having a lot of success um, at this industry. And some of them, it's interesting how, how fast they blew up, how, how quick they caught on or their stories. I was not that at all. Like I, I struggled. I didn't sell well at first. I like, I was low on the leaderboard. Okay. And so I got this close to just, man, this is not for me. I mean, I'm talking like a month in, I'm at like six, seven deals. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. After doing some preseason. And you're just Level like, of suck was high. Well, and, and, and <laughs> what's interesting, so I want to rewind a little bit. Because yeah. you're an all-American wrestler. You are used to winning. You go crush it in one thing. To go get your butt kicked in another, like, was that a big pride? Like, it's like, Oh, it's huge. Yeah. I was I like, mean, what was going on mentally there, I guess? That's what's interesting about, you know, my platform is there's a lot of people that are, that are successful at this job. And they just kind of continued success. They're like, well, I did this in business. And then I went into this in my first year, this and this. Yeah. And I was used to having success in some different areas, but this was so outside my comfort zone. I grew up blue collar and, uh, you know, 
kind of a poor family, and it was like, hey, yes, ma'am, you asked to come into a door. Yeah. You don't knock on the door late. Like, it was, it was just very different, and I had an extreme uncomfort level to actually get to the spot where I could actually sell. It was tough. And I, I actually find that a lot, and that's interesting that you say this. Like, a lot of people that are trained good manners, it's like we have to flip the script because door-to-door -door is almost essentially you're automatically <sighs> awkward, bugging somebody, having to be a little bit yeah. aggressive, and it's not in our blueprint growing up that we actually took that route. Yeah, no so one I, likes you. Yeah. You're saying the wrong things. I went from my family being proud. I'm a firefighter. I, you know, I was the uh, second high school diploma, my mom's genealogy, and I was the first college degree, and they're proud to, I'm going to not be a teacher or a firefighter, and I'm going to knock doors. And the social pressure, I mean, there's people watching this right now going, and they're struggling, at learning at this job or learning sales. Yeah, or not you know, hitting the numbers they want to hit. They're not hitting the yeah. They're not rock stars uh, yeah. immediately, right? And they're on that cusp of, we all hit it up. Do you quit and go back to the norm or do you experience uncomfort and that stress of uncomfort yeah. and maybe, maybe have it all? Yeah. That's tough. So when did it finally click? Like when were those moments or what happened? What, what changed to where it was like, I got it? A phone call from my dad and a couple... Uh, couple reps they gave me advice humility changed it right so everybody thinks we're really good and we're, we're great at this but like today who did you just uh, speak with about public speaking dan clark dan clark yeah. and you came walked in the door like oh my gosh i learned so you took time out of your day to go there and learn about public speaking yeah how many people spend two hours out of their day learning not very many right like, and i was like this is out of my comfort zone like you know, I'm hosting the conference, I can put the business piece together, but now put me on the stage and I'm like, I've never, like, nobody's ever told me how to do this. Like, yeah, I, right? I, like, like, there's a right and a wrong way, but I, nobody ever, you but, know. But that's the difference between success and not success. Yep. It's stress. You have to have a mental, physical, and financial stress sometime in your life. So if you can experience that and get through, and how you get through is you look into, listen to mentors, and you get good advice. Love it. And my dad, straight up, I was on the phone with my dad. I'm like, I don't think I'm making money. I'm going to go firefighting. And he's like, go do it. Quit. He's like, why not? He's like, it's okay to quit once in your life. Mm. And I was like, oh, man, I'm eating ramen noodles, yeah. right? If anyone's watching this podcast and it's in the middle of the summer and you're eating ramen noodles, I hear you, right? <laughs> yes. Ramen, <You're> <laughs> beef or chicken, right? Yeah. And I went to two. Uh, my buddy Ben Manjack said, hey, man, stick it out. And I had two experience reps that said, just do the script. And the other guy said, just be yourself. A little country, a little rock and roll. And I think I sold 15 that next week or something. And I ended up selling 125 that first summer. That's crazy. And then 200 was the next summer and went from there, I guess. That's awesome. So let's kind of shift gears a little bit. Um, you, you were like Insta famous. Uh, you know, you have how many followers on your Instagram? You know, that's all context of where you're at. Yeah, that, I mean, I mean we're, I, we're in Idaho and Utah. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say. You, you know, know what I mean? There's of, some guy with like 200,000 followers, like, who? <laughs> yeah, no, no. But I mean, but I mean in, in comparison, you've done well with um, building your own kind of brand, embracing this whole social media aspect. Says which, the guy who has podcasts and built a brand <laughs> well, I, himself to have a whole, I am still I'm learning. speaking at your event, you know I what know, I mean? I, I'm learning though, 100%. But what, what I mean by this though, is one thing that we both have in common is we, we got stuck in this whole like, ew, why would anybody take a selfie? Ew, like Instagram, that's stupid. And we both had to come to a decision of like, okay, let's embrace the social media aspect versus take the traditional like, eh, this is dumb, like why do that? Like. I guess kind of tell me a little bit of your philosophy of like why leverage social media and how you do that and then kind of the benefits of it. Well, the biggest thing, and I think there's a lot of people right now that would relate to this, is it was very uncomfortable. Was like we're first generation millennials, yes. you know, and it's uncomfortable at first because like how you go about it makes you feel uncomfortable, right? And so it is uncomfortable. But the reality is 90% of every decision made in America is social media related. It's, it's powerful. If your business isn't understanding it or a part of it, or you don't have someone running it, then you're going to be behind because that's just what's going on. Yeah. I mean, to, you and I were talking about we didn't even do it all. I, I went to about, I think, over 25 countries and never posted one picture because I didn't care. Like, I don't care if you like me at the Coliseum. And then the reality is now you're seeing this big influx in entrepreneurs. You're an entrepreneur. Yep. Uh, your whole door-to-door -door com runs off of social media. 
and propaganda and advertising. 100%. And yeah. how uncomfortable has it been? It's, it's weird. It's awkward. It's, it, you know what I mean? It's almost like, am I so annoying? Like, I'm sure you've heard enough of me. You know what I mean? Do I really need to say it again? Do I really need to post one more time? Like, you know, and it, it's scary. You're like, what if people defriend me? What if people say, oh, that idiot, like he's always blabbering about what? And, and I've definitely had my own internal... <laughs> No, we, all battles. of us, exactly. all of us. Well, and so people watching this, like you get, guys get to make a decision is, are you going to invest and educate and be uncomfortable and learn something that is the standard for advertising, right? Yeah. And it's okay to screw up. Like we've been screwing up this whole time, right? It's great. Like it's okay. Like if this person unfriends you or doesn't like it, that's okay. Like whatever. Yeah. Who cares? And, the, and, and, and what's interesting is this kind of helps. I, I think this is where I'm excited for your speech at DoryorCon. Because, guys, he's presenting on what is the millennial code that we need to now adapt, right? And, and understand and embrace and not fight. And I guess kind of using social media as one of the pieces behind the millennial mind, like, why is that such an important aspect of how people operate and businesses operate and, you know, the younger generation resonates with? Like, why is that? I mean... Well, let's look at the core of it. You and I went out, we sold X amount. You sold very well. I think you sold over 300? 400. 400, right? Yeah, four. there's not a lot of those guys. Joey, you, there's some guys. Joey Howell, my, my business partner, who'll be speaking. He did 444, 20 cancels one year. It's crazy. And it, you guys mastered that. You crushed it, right? Well, now things have evolved. Either you're going, oh, well, I used to do this, or we're evolving, and social media is a part of that. Yeah. They don't... You could sit down with uh, Generation Z because there's millennial and Generation Z and you can talk about like how much money you made and how many you sold and they might care more about your Instagram and Facebook followers. It's so true. Why is that? Like, what, like why though? That's what I want to know. Well, and that's what, you know, we'll dive into, you know, next, I think Friday or Saturday, whatever yeah. day I'm speaking, you know, a big part of it is ah, there's so much little tiny things that go into the fact, you were talking about depression. When did you post that the other day? Yeah, like last week I was prepping because my speech at DDDCon is actually really couples well with this. It has yeah. a lot to do with, you know, kind of the epidemic of the current generations. Yeah. And depression is way more predominant today. Oh, it's the highest it's ever been. Than it ever been. And, yeah. you know, it was interesting kind of like diving into some of the statistics and a lot of it has to do with lack of connection and comparison right it's yeah. like me versus you on social media yeah right well and you got to understand that millennials want to sell more or have more recognition make more and have more and have more in our mind we think wealth we think hey let's get done doing the sales and be worth a million dollars have all this wealth right well some of them don't care about the financial aspect yes. they want life experiences their wealth is defined a little bit different some will live in a van. I have a friend, she lives in a van, she has van life, the whole works, and that's what she does. She yeah, lives think in a of van. this push to tiny homes. Oh, my buddy, like, my buddy Ellis, like, I should post his thing. He, he built his own tiny home. Really? I almost bought one for DDDCon. So in tw summer 2020, we're doing a documentary and I'm gonna get either a tiny home or a motor home. We're gonna go around the country and it'd be dope. I love it. There's a little teaser, but. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's the whole point. It's, so, that, it's less, it's, it's almost like, I don't need a mansion, I could have a yeah. tiny home and be... Well, and so let's, let's identify it. There's a couple different groups that are watching us right now. There's some guys that have done this industry a long time and they sold and they have wealth and they made money and they're either understanding how to kill, keep building their business or they're struggling because they're feeling a disconnect. And if you're struggling, a lot of times you hear this, oh, these kids don't work as hard. When yes. I did this, when I did when this... When I was a kid, I woke up at five in the morning and... The cow. Or, or right now it's like, okay, is anybody on here going, when I started doing alarms, yeah. I didn't have a pin. Yeah, it was I, uphill both ways. I didn't have paperwork. <laughs> I literally didn't have enough paperwork to sell my first alarm. Like I only had yeah. half. But are you complaining about it opposed to figuring out? Yeah. Because either they want to sell more, they want to make more or have more. So the make more, all these millennials are like, or Generation Z is like, yeah, yeah I should be worth $100,000 right out of college because they're seeing all this social media and this Instagram and everything, yes. you know? So it's understanding the science of each category. And a big thing we'll dive into is, are you being a victim or a victor? Love that. Right? So expound on that a little bit. Well, what okay, so that? Sam, you could sit here and be like, oh man, I, I remember, like, let's say you're hiring me. 
and I'm like, well, man, I kind of want to like travel the world first, and I don't know about knocking, and I don't know about volunteering at Door Door Con, and I'm saying all the wrong things. So either you're irritated because I'm not man, going not, to work. Yeah, you're not doing. You're, you're not willing to work. You just want to have fun. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, freaking millennials. Yeah. So you either convert your mind to researching into why millennials are messed up. Like I read an article in Time magazine about proving our millennial generation is less productive. Slam dunk. So you can spend all your time reading that stuff and be a victim and watch your business dissolve. Or you can be a victor and start researching and understanding yourself and looking in the mirror and realizing you're the problem, I'm the problem. Same as knocking doors, figure it out. Yes. You gotta do research. Today you did public speaking for two hours. You and I are sitting here learning. Well, if people aren't being a victor and learning, they're gonna get lost in the dust. 100%. And this is what's so interesting. This is why I'm, like, what I'm excited to share on is is think about like what our job does for the millennial generation. Why does it resonate so much with me and you? Dude. Why does it resonate so much with the Gen Zs? Like, why is that? I, we get to do what we want, when we want, build our own business. Yeah, we dictate our income. We, we dictate our income. It's individualistic. It's recognizable. Like, oh. think of the dopamine hit, the feeling of like, I sold 200, I sold X. Like, yeah. The, the, the pride that comes from it, the, you know, it, it hits every piece of what makes it, the needs and wants of the younger generations. It's amazing. And it's stupid how, I mean, how much money we can make in a short amount of time frame and how you can build your own business and have wealth. And travel and freedom and I was and in nine countries last want. year. Yeah. Our, my region's doing great. Things are, right now, we're at like a 40% increase like all time and I went to nine countries last year not yeah. counting all the other stuff right versus and, two weeks paid vacation which is the conventional yeah. way of doing things. but now let's go back to the core of things um, you and I experienced it and I don't know did you come out of the gate selling pretty well I did pretty well you're that guy yeah. I right. was that guy. Okay. I so, know. <laughs> I wish I had a cooler story. I was talking to Dan. Dan was like, you need to humanize yourself and not be the guy that just was good. And I was like, that's, that was pretty just good. Yeah, you're, was you're like, a, dude, I was the anomaly. You're my buddies that were just selling, right? And I'm like, ramen noodles, whatever. Yeah. And so, you know, some people right now are struggling and they need to outlast it. You need to weather the storm, right? Because then this job is so awesome. And there's some guys that came out of the gates like you and, and now they hit a spot in the business where they yes. stopped learning. They mastered the art of selling this and the market changed. And well, now I got to try and recruit. And I'd rather sell a deal than recruit, recruit this millennial because he's this and this and this. So let's, let's, I talked to Jason Newby for about an hour, ah, two, three days ago. Did you? Right? Okay. So the guy that brought him in, he calls me, he goes, I've sold more accounts at Vivint than anyone in the history of Vivint. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. Like it was such a like, and, and much love to you, Jay, somebody tag him in this, right? Yeah. But I was like, wow. Like it was like, oh, good job. But also kind of like, you just know one skill really well. Well, and, and it's and, all, and it's all like, different because I, he, Jason and I wrestled together yeah. and we're on varsity together. And he, he was like, hey, I was kind of beat up from sports and w firefighting was meant to be my career or coaching. And why I really love our industry is I love coaching. I l sincerely love seeing a person have success. I want to see all my guys' back ends and everything, and I'll work mine out later, right? And, and Jason, he can sell. He can sell lights he out. He rips. He's one of the best. I just am saying he's trying to figure out the recruiting game still. And that's where I, I think that people are uncomfortable putting themselves in these different positions. It's like, yeah, you've mastered one thing but it's all about how do we continue the journey of mastery to the next levels in this business that creates a very fun Okay, so think this. about this though. I think sometimes us as, if you're a recruiter looking at this, right? Yeah. Um, I'm, in, I'm in Israel, Tel Aviv, and I'm sitting there and- Great sales reps, by the way. Great sales <laughs> reps. Yeah. I'm definitely like, not knocking you? that day. Yeah. <laughs> we were just in uh, Jeru where? <laughs> just I don't know. No, we were in Turkey. So we're down there recruiting now. <laughs> and exactly. we're sitting at a table- It's a world recruiting. And this Israeli woman goes, that's the problem with you Americans. You only talk about what you do and for work. And she goes, and that does not define you. She's like, that's the least part about you as a person. And I think some people in recruiting get caught up in, what's your degree? What do you do? You know what I mean? How much you want to make? And Generation Z, especially in our generation, the first question you should ask, and I love giving away some good tips, is what do you like to do? She goes, just ask what you like to do. 
this European mindset is trickling into America. It's a good point. Right? So yeah, uh, think of Australia, dude. They give like a two month vacation yeah. for their employees. Yeah, like, it's, it's standard. Crazy. It's standard. Standard. So the, because of the internet and connectivity, uh, European mindset and like I've been through all Central America, the whole works, that is trickling over. And some old business owners are uncomfortable with it because they think it's lazy. Well, is it just entrepreneur? Right, and it's all based upon the end goal. So why would Jason maybe want to invest in more in different categories? And that guy's yes. a hard worker, I know him personally, right? And it's the same reason why you are doing something different. What is your vision? Make it's, a bigger impact. Okay, and a vision will pull you, and goals will push you. So you can have your why, and you can have goals. And those will push you. But especially Generation Z, they need to understand and feel their vision. Yes, and like, I, think, I think people want and, 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 and speaking on that, it's what's going to push them and pull them more isn't money. It's making a difference. It's, oh. it's, it's, hitting, it's, it's hitting those desires and wants to travel. It's hitting the desires. Like, look what at money the charities. does. Many, and money does. Yeah. But I'm saying I think there's a bigger ask or a bigger call to live a great life. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean. Now, well, now here's the catch. Okay. There's been studies showing that the Generation Z or lower millennial age care more about recognition and, and world development. Yes. World, world development. World is development. The best word. Yes. They care more about world development than how much they make at a job. Okay? Then again, there's reverse studies that show they care more about their self and personal gratification than they care about other stuff. And then there's some that say they care more about the company brand. So, the, so what we're also running into is people don't realize that you need to ask, I call it empathy plus three equals Ooh, I accountability. Like this. I like okay? this. So empathy plus three equals accountability. So when you were recruited, it was pretty standard. Uh, make this much money, do this. Yep. You don't have to go too deep. Well now, are you talking to a guy that wants money? Are you talking to a guy that wants travel? Or do you want a guy that wants recognition? And if you're just a one question recruiter, you're gonna get smoked. So you ask, which, which bucket do you kind of fit into? So now we're talking about more work. Like I love recruiting, I love sitting with guys. I have guys that have worked for me for 10 years. I have guys that have been with me for 10 years. Joey and I, like Joey's, I mean, you guys come talk to the guy. He sold over 300 seven times, over 200. Yeah, so Ten times. I'm excited, Joey. I'm excited you guys are tag teaming this. Oh, dude, show. Joey is the That's hammer. I'm like, I'm like, You're Joey, like, fun let's go that. to Iceland. I remember yeah. one time I'm like, I need Joey's to go like, to boom. Iceland. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm going to go to Iceland. I need to really just flow and figure stuff out. He's like, yeah, why don't you just knock a door? Like, like Joey's the hammer, and yes. I have the creative part, and it's a, dude, he's my business partner, and I love working with him. Yeah. I, I just love it because we balance each other out. But to come full circle is if you're recruiting, are you a one-shop recruiter? Do you have your pitch? Do you have your one, one little thing? Oh, that didn't work? Oh, you're frustrated. These guys don't want to work. No, it's your fault. You need to have empathy, sincere empathy of what they're struggling with or why they, they look at something a different way. Yes. They don't see the economy the same way. The last 10 years has been the greatest economy ever in American history. Why would they feel starved like we did? Interesting. What year did you start in alarms? 2008. Okay, when was the economy drop? 2008. Okay, so you and I came in a starved economy, right? Yeah. So now you want them to think like us? That's your fault and my fault. That's true. It's interesting. Yeah, you get a guy right out of college and they're entering into the business space in yeah. today's economy, different world. And on top of that, his 10 years, he's been told you can do whatever you want to do and this is what you're going to make. And he's right because he hasn't seen any different. Why would he? Interesting. So a lot so a lot of this I go to colleges and I'll speak and I was speaking at a high school I donate my time and I'll go and I will speak about conventional and unconventional business because a lot of people are just ignoring the psychology because it's uncomfortable. Yeah, it's like I'd rather put my head in the stand. You'd rather okay, uh, do you knock a door or recruit a guy? Do you wake up and um, hang out or do you read a psychology book? So you're talking about extreme uncomfort, and then all of us need to eat our own words. All we've been t telling reps to do is go to work and be uncomfortable, right? Hmm. Now it's kind of flipped around a little bit. Yeah. That's interesting. So where do you, what do you think, if you had to give, like, you know, some simple sound advice, so you're a leader, you're a maybe aspiring leader, um, maybe you're just that good rep that, you know, is trying to transition and recruit and start to, like, build his business, what, what piece of advice would you give him 
knowing what you just said, is there any like, hey, here's some clean cut nuggets that are just like, do this, do this, I love this. You know, I've been very fortunate to struggle at every category. In sports, I struggled at first. In alarms, I struggled at first. So I've been very fortunate. Like, I didn't come from a wealthy family at all. You know what I mean? So I've been very blessed with the and, rawness. And, and, and Pa, I, I want you guys to pay attention to how he said, I've been very blessed. I've been fortunate enough. I just read a book, and I, I don't mean to no, cut you off. That's I, what, dude, it was, we were talking earlier. We should have recorded know, all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, so my father-in-law, I should freaking, it's on my phone, dang it. it there's a book <laughs> that he, we were jamming last night. He's a smart dude, and he's, he pulls out this book, and it talked about the, the beautiful aspect of how more people need struggle in today's society. Oh, it's and, the best. And, and it, it, what's the book? I'll post it in the comments or whatever after this. I can't think of the name of the book, but I was like, dang, I need to read this. But it was all about his, you know, the, the author's like, I put my kid in homeschool, and part of the homeschool is I put him on a farm for a month to go work on a huh. farm for a month. Yeah. And then he's like, I want to put my kids in failing situations so that they struggle. So, like, you, I love how you said it was such a blessing that I had to struggle as I wrestled, as I went to school, as I did this job, doing six my first month was the biggest blessing looking back. Yeah. And sorry, I didn't mean to. Well, no, 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 but, but that's what kind of what we're talking about. This is an obscure topic. So some people are going to clock off and not want to listen to it. Yeah. And some people are going to dive in and it all depends on where their business is at. Right. So some people are like, this is intriguing. Some people are like, this is, this is uncomfortable. You'll see people, some people will stop watching this right now because it's uncomfortable. It's an obscure topic. They want us to say, do this, do this, do this. Yes. That's what they want. Just do this, do this. And it works out. But you got to also understand their psychology. Like I was blessed. I got back from one summer in, in college and I was fighting fires and I had like $8.75 exactly, half and change, and I had to buy food for two weeks while I was out uh, working in Oregon. My base was in Oregon fighting fires. And I had to survive on that until I get my first paycheck. And I remember that being a blessing because then one of my buddy Trevor, who did, uh, did alarms, he said, hey, I went out and, and that, that's what tipped me over. Trevor goes, man, I made like 13,000 last year and we played sports together. And he goes, Shane, I believe in you. You should try it out. And he goes, it's better than having like 10 bucks in your pocket. And I was like, and we played sports together. He's like, all you got to do is like sports. He's like, you just got to figure it out. And I'm like, okay. You know, so the struggles of it, you got to embrace it. The question is how many people are going to be this close to gold and quit this job? It's that one meme where the guy's like with his pickaxe and he stops right before the diamonds or whatever. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen that. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. yeah. But it, it, it's so true in this but in this jobs, in anything in life, anything that's hard or, or like achieving anything great, yeah. there's always going to be the struggle before. Like You hope that, that no and, one and reads a book, hey man, I was rich when I was born, find this book, I was rich when yes. I was born, everything worked out, I had no struggles, it's great. Nobody likes that book. Nobody. And, 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 and it's very hard, like and when you ask me, you're like, hey, were you just good out the get go? I was like, yes. But it's not that I didn't have my struggle to get me where I'm at. But you today. might have, you struggled in different areas. I struggled in so many different areas. It's just my first day I happened to sell five. And and you know what I mean? My you first month. Month you did five. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I did that my first day, didn't know what I was doing, and I threw in five. And and so some people were like, Well, you were just blessed. And I was like, You just think that I just rode on the coattails of a lucky first day? No, you had a lot leading up to that moment. And I did have I had trained since I was 11 knocking doors. Like it wasn't my first door, it okay. was my first. So speaking to people right now, like some of you, you know, I looked at Mendez's podcast. Let's look at what you said, what I said, what Mendez. Mendez came into this when he's 33, right? And, and if I was gonna give a tidbit of advice, you had a lot of training to that moment. Yes. My sales training was I was a firefighter. Yeah, you went from firefighter to sales dude. I went from, I sold since I was 11. Okay, yeah. And I transitioned into this. In Mendez, um, I'm looking forward to meeting him too. Yeah. He had a successful business. He's an entrepreneur and Running transition. Running Walmarts and yeah, exactly. So, like, so the big advice I'll give people is don't compare, compete. Yes. The why a lot of people are depressed on social media or they're depressed at their job. They're they're comparing Nugget. themselves opposed to competing. It's okay to compete. We you should compete. Like find a guy in your sales industry and compete, but don't compare. Well, because you don't guy, know his. You don't know his story. Up to it, you don't know all the little life lessons that he learned as a kid. And that is where, going back to this depression piece, just like you said it, it's people are depressed simply because they compare yeah. all day. Yeah. That guy's better. That's prettier. That's 
fitter. That guy's his fitness. But it's like you don't see the 15 hours that he spent prior studying to make that right. one post. Or you don't see the 1,000 hours in the gym to get the biceps that he does. Yeah. You just see the biceps and you go, my biceps don't look like his biceps. And so what do you do? You got to reframe. You have to be able to reframe and know and reframe where you're at. Okay, this is where I'm at. Okay, I screwed up. Okay, and forgive yourself. Don't compare, compete, right? Forgive yourself and constantly reframe. And just, just go after it, whatever. Who cares? You're going to screw up. I love that. I mean, that, it's all psychology. I believe in, in why I, I rarely talk about selling. Selling alarms is easy, man. You knock on the door, you do a pitch, and you do it a whole bunch. That's it. It's just repetitive. That's it's, it. It's, selling anything. Yes. House, I've seen you sell solar. Like, you, here's your pitch and do it and just be willing to go through more psychological pain than someone else. That's it. That's done, right? Yeah. The hard part everybody watching this is running into is, are you overcoming the pain of that new experience, that new uncomfort? Are you the top sales rep that that's, that's now recruiting? Yeah. Are you going to a new industry? Yeah. Or is, is it, oh, I have a wife and kids, but I can't. I heard Mendez had a wife and kids. Oh, I'm single, but I can't. Oh, I'm poor, but... Right? And so there's it's so the much friend. success stories out there, as I'm giving shout outs to guys I've never even met, right? And, but that's the cool part about what you're doing at Door to Oricon. And that's why I'm excited to talk because this is a different, so I've spent a lot of time entirely on this area and things are great. Like, I, I, everything that's going on is in our advantage. It's crazy. And speaking of just the shift and this new movement, because just within our industry, my mission was to say, let's give it a facelift. Let's up level it. Let's bring yeah. some unifying to it. Let's let's do it. Let's play it. A, let's play it the new generation's game. Hmm. Oh, Does that make sense? I like that. Yeah. So it's like I said, why is this industry still behind conventionally? And let's bring the modernization to it, which is playing to the Gen Z and the Gen and to our generation's game. That's so interesting. Which is why I built DDDCon. Why I put the podcast. Why that's my why. When everybody yeah. asks like, why are you doing this? It's like, will I make a dime? No. I probably I make money consulting in the university and all that other stuff, but it's like, what's crazy is I said if this doesn't happen, our vehicle will go unappreciated. Our vehicle will still have a bad rap. Our vehicle is the sexiest vehicle on the planet. Dude, I love it. So why not make it sexy by letting it adapt to the modern way of doing business? And that's business? because of uncomfort. It's because of uncomfort. And guess how many people still fight what I'm doing? Quite a lot. So many people. I get off the phone, and I'm not going to say names, but every I was in a big building down the street yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, half mile this way, and, and a couple. Of, I mean, every day I'm in a different office, a different building with big wigs in the space, and half of them go, "I love what you're doing." Like fluent. They have 150 guys coming to the econ. Yeah. Like embrace the heck out of it. Where across the street, they're like, "Oh, I won't send anything of my guys to that." That's the stupidest thing on the planet. And I'm yeah. like, why are you still living but in this that's, But that's why you know um, that's in business nowadays. In my opinion, if you grew up how I did uh, conventional um, aspects, you know, got the degrees, all that kind of stuff, well, what you're doing is uncomfortable. So if, uncomfortable. People, if people are uncomfortable with it, then you're actually doing a good job. Exactly. In I'm my like, opinion. And, 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 and that's, I, when they tell me that, I go, your people will find out about this. Why? Because where do they live? Well, um, but, but this is thing, and, something and too. It, their vision might be different than your vision. Ex they, and, right? and exactly. And I, and I go, and it's not that I'm trying to compete against you. I'm just saying you're trying to be protective over an ownership feel and living a small game instead of embracing and empowering your people to learn, adapt, be creative, like do it unconventionally. Yeah. And I'm like, that's what I'm promoting, which is only going to help you versus if you hold on to how you did it 10 years ago, people will pass you up. People will recruit better than you. People will attract more than you are. Yeah. And that's where this industry is going. And it's, you know, and it's bold for me to say that. And it's uncomfortable to say that publicly on a podcast and whatnot. But like, I think it goes right in hand with this whole shift in generation. It's like, they want a collective and a collaborative. They want yeah. everyone to win. They want world, what did you say, world? Uh, I don't know, we've been talking world about. <laughs> uh, you said a cool word, but it was about like helping out like 
on a global yeah world impact they have a global impact like a global uh, impact more more statistically more millennial generation say they would like to have a positive impact on the world yes. opposed to have a good uh, position at a company exactly and that's just the stats and you know and and that's what's cool about this this podcast that I, dude i appreciate you jumping on here and flowing and and i just i'm excited to talk because at the end of the day what joey's going to talk about is the simplicity of process and old school still works oh yeah everything 100%. it's all it's all process everybody knows it's simplicity and process right well, the That's sales it. books from 50 years ago are still the same sales stuff still today. works at the same time it's now you have to have a little bit of psychology in my in my opinion you would if you really want to have to achieve your vision now my vision is different with your vision i wanted to aggressively travel the world i wanted to have a, a net worth that i could walk away from Lauren and be ahead because so many people i know made cash flow and they didn't come out the other side Okay, so many people I know. And so I wanted to be in that spot and I wanted to live an exceptional life. And Love then it. I wanted to mentor and coach people along the way. Which Mentoring and coaching people along the way was my, is my number one passion of this because I was supposed to be a high school wrestling football coach. Yeah, you just, now your, your, your students are your people. Yeah. Which is so fun. So right now we hang out on the beach. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's not fundraising for the uniforms. It's, yeah. let's go hang out on the beach yeah. now. You love so, it. So, I mean, but at the same time, it's process. Alabama football and Patriots, they have a process and a system. If you have a process and a system, then, then that is the foundation. You have to have a process and a system. Once you have your process and your system, yep. you can build up your leaders and you can go. You just got to understand how to attract people to that process and system. I love that. Okay, so we're running out of time. So if you're still on this, love you. Oh yeah, we're Share live. this and like this. I know, it's fun. <laughs> we get lost in this. So hey, if you're yeah. watching or listening to this or whatever, give some thumbs up because I think Shane has done a phenomenal job and obviously he should know about it. Um, but one last question I ask every single person, so I finish every podcast with, if you could give the industry one piece of advice, you could pick rep, leader, recruiter, first year guy, experienced guy, like pick a genre, whatever, what would it be? I, you know, I think the most powerful thing is when you see if you're in a leadership role or you're part of a company or if you're struggling in an area or doing good, you need to establish your own personal vision, right? You need to have conviction on your vision. I have a very strong conviction on my vision that when someone works with me, I 100% know you're leaving. I'm gonna prepare you to leave. I am so proud of the guys that came in de in debt with student loans that walked out debt free with portfolios, a college degree, a skill set. And when I hire someone, I have the intent of one, you're gonna work with me and make the most money and you're gonna leave and I want to be on your resume. I love well, that. Or two, you're going to work with me and I'm going to teach you how to build your own business. I, that's why I, I consult and help people build businesses, right? You know, or the third one is you're going to work with me, make the most money, and we're going to build your business and work with me at AmSmart and do a parallel alignment on it to cash flow. So those three results are great. And I am very proud of the guys who left and have their own companies and their own jam and they walked out of this industry ahead. Love that. And so it's, that's my vision, and I'm Love passionate about that. my vision. And so I think a lot of leaders out there need to maybe relook at their vision and go, is it in line with what you're pitching? I love that. Because some people may say that, but operate different. Yeah, it's, yeah. You know what I mean? They're just repeating someone else's vision. Exactly. This is what it's I want. find your vision. Yeah. Exactly. It's Be honest you. with yourself. Yes. What is your vision? I love that. I don't, I don't want to knock a door every day of the year, right? I don't want to do that. And I, I want to, last year I went to nine countries, the year before I went to 12 countries, but I want to have, I want my business to grow every year. I want my sales reps to do well and me to do well. And I want and, right? And so I need to have a formula that has the and. Love that. Okay. Well, you guys heard it firsthand. This is Shane Hall, the man, the myth. And one of these days, are you going to invite me on one of your cool adventures? Like, Dude, see, we, see, we need a, I we know, need, I was like, we need a another like podcast. This. I was like, another travel podcast, because I love to travel. No. So I'm like, next podcast, we'll just talk about cool places on the planet. That'd Dude, be, I'm that'd not even kidding. Dope. That's what we should do. Like, okay. why? No one wants to see us. We're I know. In I was like, this building. is dumb. I know. Yeah, I they're like, like, oh, Shane's not. Hey, I, last time I went Instagram I, live, I was on the island of Bonaire scuba diving. I was People are bored. They're gone already. Yeah, I was like, you probably are gone. My best podcast, I did a podcast on the top of the PP Islands in Thailand. Land, so Dude. I was kind of like, that's more your jam. That's, that's our next podcast. That's everybody's jam. Come on. Okay. Hey, much love. Love you guys.